Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at Guns.com taking a look at some of the more unusual firearms that they've got in their warehouse. And so of course, nothing says unusual like a dual side-by-side -side pair of guns glued together into one gun, like the Gilboa Snake here. Now this came out of Israel. Uh, this was first announced, or first developed in 2013. There were a few years worth of delays, but a couple years ago it actually became available on the US market. This is a civilian version, made, at least for legal purposes, manufactured here in the United States. And it's got some pretty substantial differences to the military pattern that its designer, one Amos Golan, uh, created back in Israel. So uh, obviously the thing that makes this unique is it's a pair of 5.56 ARs, uh, built together in one receiver housing. So it uses two magazines, it has two triggers, it has two buffer tubes, it has two barrels, it has two gas blocks, it has two bolts, it has two of everything, except upper and lower receiver where you have one of each, and one unitized charging handle. Today's video is generously sponsored by Guns.com. Whether you're looking to get a cool new gun to add to your own collection, or looking to get rid of something that's no longer interesting to you, they have uh, the tools to help out. They have a huge inventory of both new and historical firearms in their warehouse, along with listings from brick and mortar uh, dealers around the country. Their inventory changes on a weekly basis, so check it out, see if there's anything cool in there. If you find something that you do want, and decide, well, maybe I just want to swap out this old piece for that cool new one, they have a firearms purchasing program that makes that process pretty quick and painless and easy. So uh, that's called We Buy Guns, you can find that on their website as well. I also want to point out that Guns.com does partner with a number of gun safety and gun rights organizations, including the American Suppressor Association, Project Child Safe, the Second Amendment Foundation, and the Firearms Policy Coalition. So if you're looking to uh, help out with firearms rights, help out with firearm safety programs, they do a bunch of that work behind the scenes as well. Anyway, let's get back to the Gilboa Snake. Now, the concept, you might look at this and go, wow, what an incredibly, incredibly Israeli sort of thing to do. Like, Israel seems to produce a disproportionate share of uniquely odd tactical concepts. And in fact, two of them have come from this designer and his company, the Gilboa Snake here, and also the Corner Shot, which is a big long carbine stock assembly with a big hinge in it and a TV, camera, and screen system so that you can mount a Glock, a little pistol, in this big assembly, and bend it around corners and look around the corner and shoot stuff around the corner. Sounds really tactical, how practical is it in reality? I don't know, never tried it. I suspect it's a questionable, rare, actual practical utility. But, like, it's, Israel's a, a weird place for guns, you know, for every fantastic thing like the Uzi or the Galil you get something like a Gilboa snake. Now, it's easy to write this off as, oh, this is just a totally ludicrous, like, silly idea, but this is a silly idea that was officially tried by a lot of major countries 50 years ago, 60 years ago. So uh, ever since the 1950s, the United States, prim like, we know, I those of us in the US are probably most familiar with the US trials programs in this area. Uh, programs called SALVO and SPEW were investigating ways to increase a soldier's probability of a hit. If you pull the trigger, what can you do to make it more likely that on first trigger pull a soldier will make an actual hit and incapacitate an enemy? And a lot of these things came down to how do we get more bullets out of the gun with a single, single trigger pull. And Russia was also experimenting, well at the time it would have been the Soviet Union, was also experimenting with this sort of thing, as were a lot of other countries that we don't see as much information about. I have, for example, seen basically a tri-barreled version of the FAMAS from this same, I think that was 1970s, 1980s, but well, obviously it was later because it was a FAMAS. Anyway, I digress. Uh, everybody has tried multi-barrel guns. So there is a rifle that looks very much like a foul done this way, sitting in the Springfield Armory National Historic Site Museum on public display. It's got two mags, two barrels, and one unitized receiver. Uh, the Russians tried it not just with two barrel, but with three barrel guns. The TKB-059 is a triple magazine, triple barrel side by side rifle. And then of course there were the other alternate ways that people tested, people tried to get the same effect. So 
you want to get like two or three shots down range with one pull of the trigger, one way to do it is a burst in a machine gun, but of course then you've got recoil impacting the placement of the second and third rounds. You can do multiple barrels so that one trigger pull fires two barrels at the exact same time, that's concept. You can do duplex or triplex ammunition, where one cartridge case has two or three projectiles stacked in it, two or three bullets, so that one firing ejects one case but two or three bullets. Everybody tried that. Uh, and then of course hyperburst systems, where it's a burst, but it goes so fast that there's, and there's a mechanism built into the gun of, there were several different types tried, where multiple rounds have exited the gun before the recoil has actually impacted into the shooter and changed the point of aim. The Russian AN-94 is the classic best known example of that sort of system. But all of these different options were tested by all of the major powers during the Cold War. So. Viewed from that perspective, the Gilboa snake is not that crazy, innovative, new of an idea. It's just that no one's ever really tried putting that on the civilian market before. So um, this is getting long, but let me tell you, before we take a closer look at this, I want to explain the differences between this gun and the military gun. So the military version of the, the snake is basically the same overall concept. You've got two barrels, but Fundamentally, and very importantly, you have one trigger mechanism. So a single trigger pull will fire both barrels simultaneously. I have not put my hands on one of the military ones, but as far as I can tell from the pictures, they appear to have a gas piston operating system instead of direct gas impingement, which this does. And they have one gas piston that operates both bolts simultaneously. So you're kind of, you're reducing down the number of duplicate parts by doing that. The military version also very interestingly uh, has gotten rid of the buffer tube system, uh, or the, the spring and buffer of the AR uh, mechanism, and instead redesigned the recoil spring system to be up in the top of the upper receiver. Kind of like the difference between a foul and a folding stocked foul. By moving the recoil system up here, that allows the military version of the Gilboa to have a normal width stock instead of the extra super duper wide stock that this has, and also allows it to have a folding stock. So to my mind, goofy as it may sound, the military version of this gun is a legit viable option, because you have one trigger and you pull one trigger and you get two shots on target. Now, you're going to add some weight to the gun to do this, but, um, but it's, like, it's going to do what you expect it to do. And two shots means either at very close range you're going to get two hits. Essentially it's a one trigger pull double tap on a target, which is relevant when you're using a smaller cartridge where it's maybe ideal to get multiple hits to ensure that an enemy is actually incapacitated. At longer range you're talking 100, 150, 200 yards. Now the bullets are going to be diverging. and this is part of the original concept of all of these different systems. If, you're, if your aim is actually just slightly off, there's a reasonable chance with two rounds that one of them will still hit the target. Um, and that's certainly true with the military version of the Gilboa. Now, the civilian version here being made in the US has a number of features that are different and unfortunately less practical than that military version. So now, sorry that took a while, now let's take a closer look at exactly how this one works. All right, up close, you take a look at this from the side and it looks more or less normal. It's when you take a look at it from the top or bottom that you really appreciate the like physical bulk of this gun, especially the butt stock, by having two side-by-side -side, uh, buffers and buffer springs and buffer tubes in here. This thing is just really wide, and it's awkward to get a cheek weld on it, because you're putting your face here and you're essentially offset from your optics rail. Interestingly, the controls on the Snake are not actually ambidextrous, so the mag release and the safety are only located on single sides of the gun, as you would expect for a very early, like, typical AR. You do have two bolt release and bolt hold open levers, because you have two bolts and you need to be able to actuate both of them. So we've got one unitized charging handle here, and it's ah, it's pretty stiff to, uh, to run because you're running two recoil springs, so it's twice as much work as a standard AR. But with this locked open on a pair of magazines, by the way the magazine well on the Gilboa is two separate magazine wells. It comes with a pair of magazines that are coupled together, including a unitized single floor plate. 
But you don't have to use mags like this. You can use two independent magazines, and they don't have to be the same, you can load whatever you want in there. Uh, notable, you could not use quad stacks, you could not use uh, Beta C or uh, Magpul D mags in there, because there's just not enough room for two of them. Um, although, I should say, you can actually run just one of these sides at a time, if you so desire. Anyway, anyway the bolts operate independently, so if I drop this bolt, it does not impact this side, which I drop separately. You can see through the top here we have two uh, gas tubes, there are two gas blocks, one on each barrel, and so the thing operates, oh, and of course, two triggers down here. And the two triggers are because if this was one trigger firing two barrels, there is an argument that a single pull of the trigger is firing more than one round, which is the exact definition of a machine gun under US law. So sadly, that is something that they are not able to do. Let me go ahead and disassemble this for you. This comes apart just like any regular AR, it's got like the world's longest AR receiver pins, because of course they're twice the width of any other AR. Here you can see two completely independent fire control groups. So pulling the trigger on this side drops that hammer, pulling the trigger on this side drops that one. And this is really wide. If you get a proper good grip on the pistol grip, you're only going to be able to reach one of the triggers. If you want to reach both of them, you either have to adjust your grip, to be very far forward like that, or perhaps use a longer middle finger that can span both triggers. But there's no mechanical uh, linkage here. So if you want to fire them simultaneously, which is by the way important if you want to actually hit one target with both rounds, um, you're just going to need a lot of practice trying to actually pull both triggers at the same time. Recoil system is standard AR, I won't go ahead and pull those out, but you've got two buffers, two springs, two buffer tubes there. In the upper receiver we can pull back our charging handle. We've got two bolts, and when we take a look at these up close you'll notice that one ejects to one side and the other ejects to the other side. Uh, these are set up such that it's impossible to reassemble the rifle with the bolts in the wrong side, which is nice. By the way, other than the fact that they are mirror images of each other, these are both standard uh, direct impingement or quasi-impingement uh, bolts. So uh, one of these is perfectly interchangeable with standard AR bolt, the other one is not quite. There's your tuning fork charging handle. <laughs> uh, one charging handle runs both bolts. This does mean that it is impossible to manually operate one bolt independently. So if you have a malfunction on one side, you're going to be racking both sides during the clearing process. No forward assists, but two ejection buffers there. They're flectors, I suppose. Now we come to an interesting element here, and that's, we've got a handguard here, but we've got a bunch of stuff like holes and writing around on the front of the handguard. And that's because this is actually set up so that you can zero the barrels. Think about mounting an optic, or iron sights if you want them, on a gun like this. You need to know where are the two barrels both actually pointing, and where do you want your optic to point? Normally one barrel, one optic, it's easy, you point it where the bullet goes. Well in this case, two bullets. So the idea here is your left hand barrel is adjustable for windage. You can move this left to right, this is just done using a set screw and then a locking screw. Your right hand barrel is adjustable for elevation, up and down. And so what you can do is set the, the gun in a steady rest of some sort, and move the two barrels around until you get a point of impact you like. And what you would be trying to do with that is essentially either set the two barrels up so that they are perfectly parallel, which would mean that at every range the bullet impacts are approximately one inch apart, like level on elevation but one inch apart side to side, or pick a range at which the two bullets are going to cross paths. Say, if we're going to use this at close range, you can make it say 20 yards, 25 yards, uh, where they will hit at the exact same point of impact. Noting that because uh, they will be going in a crossing direction, they'll come together at say 25 yards or 50 or wherever you decide you want them, and then they will start to deviate off to the other side. 
Um, to my mind, the practical thing to do with this is to have them both parallel, because a one inch difference in impact is almost never going to be a, an issue. Um, and that way you don't have to worry about the bullets coming, getting very far apart from each other at longer range. But this system lets you actually adjust that however you like. Then, once you have your known point of impact, then you can zero an optic. So if your barrels are parallel, you'd zero the optic, presumably to be positioned directly in between the two impact points. Uh, if you have the, the barrels crossing at a certain range, you would presumably set the optic to be zeroed for that same range. Alright, we're going to continue disassembly here and take the handguard off, but that's going to get kind of clunky. So there are three screws on top that I have to take off. Conveniently, they use two different size hex head uh, screwdrivers. Um, by the way, while I'm doing this, I will mention I'm pretty sure the reason that the civilian version has regular buffer tubes like this, while the military version has the much more desirable integrated single recoil system, same with the gas systems being different on this, I suspect that's because this is made entirely in the US in order to avoid import regulations, and they didn't, no company wanted to tool up to make all of these unique uh, you know, proprietary parts. So they ended up basically simplifying the gun to use more standard parts. Standard gas blocks, gas tubes, barrels, all that sort of stuff. Um, which is unfortunate, because those, while not as relevant as the single to double trigger change, these parts are less desirable than having a gun that has, uh, is, is more specifically made to be two barrels on one gun, instead of just two complete guns squished together. Oh, sorry, forgot this. There's also a two screw tensioning clamp at the bottom of the handguard. I don't need to actually remove that, just loosen it up so it's not putting any tension on. Now we can take the handguard off. Alright, this is on pretty tight. A little tapping with a hammer got it off, and now we can separate the receiver from the handguard from this front zeroing plate here, which is actually its own full assembly. There are five more screws in this that would allow me to disassemble it, plus these guys, like I'm, I am not getting into all of that nonsense. And none of this can actually completely come off the gun unless you take off the muzzle devices, because this is too big to fit over the muzzle devices. So. Out here on the front you can see that one barrel is set up to move left to right, the other barrel has the ability to move up and down, and it's just set screws that are going to oops, push the barrels within those oval allowable zones. I can't really show you the gas blocks because I can't take the handguard off because of that front plate, but you can see that they're in there. They're just standard gas blocks with standard gas tubes going into the receiver. And there you have it, one disassembled Gilboa snake. Which is sort of two of any other gun. I have to admit it really made me sad to get my hands on this and see just how much of a disservice the two trigger system does here. It would be really much more interesting to, I think, to have one with a single trigger. And it's really a huge shame that that technically turns the thing into a machine gun. Or at least that the company believes that it does enough that they're not willing to manufacture a semi-auto civilian version with a single trigger setup. Um, could this still be fun? Absolutely. This could still be all sorts of fun as a recreational gun. But I think, unfortunately, that trigger system, more than anything, really hurts it in terms of a practical military or other security service sort of applications. Kind of like, ah, so close. Could have been, this could have been the AN-94 we had at home, and well, that was really the AN-94 we have at home. Uh, not, not really quite so good. Maybe with enough practice, use of the middle finger, that sort of thing, uh, you could synchronize yourself well enough to be actually pulling the triggers essentially at the same time. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. I thought, I mean, obviously this is definitely something weird enough that I definitely need to take a look at and share with you guys. So. Thanks for watching.